So welcome, welcome to our open day, our October open day. This is something that uh, we do at the Permaculture Education Institute every um, couple of months as a way to let people know what's going on, what are the latest um, projects and programs and, and activities that happen here at the Institute. And it's really quite diverse. Uh, so this is a chance to, to let you know about that, um, what's going on, who's doing what and how to get involved, and also a place that you can ask questions and meet other people who are involved. So I'm Morag, and um, I'm the founder of the Permaculture Education Institute, and we have here to um, Stacy, who is the community manager. Uh, so what that means is Stacy is uh, looks after uh, the the hive community and the um, Stacy. How would you describe what you do? How about you describe it? I'm feeling like I'm speaking for you as I'm I'm looking at you, going, "Why am I telling people what you do when you could be telling people what you do?" Go ahead. <laughs> it's a lot of everything. It is looking after. Um, people I suppose um, behind the scenes um, encouraging supporting um, prompting prodding um, and keeping an eye on what's going on in the in the hive and and being in there and helping in any way that I can uh, with support or to find alternatives to you know who, who they need to speak to maybe they've got a tech problem etc so I'm just so always in buzzing around and um being helpful. Yeah. And always being helpful. Absolutely. And supporting you too, Morag. Yes, absolutely. So Stacey is is um is kind of really a go-to person within the course if you're needing help with anything. Um and she was always there to in the in the um in all of the communications, you know, helping people, encouraging people, um, inspiring people with their activities on the ground. Uh, so, yeah, that's really wonderful. So thank you for being here. Um, so I'm just going to, Stacey's going to keep letting people in as they come, but I'm going to, I'm going to begin. Um, I have a, have some slides to share with you to give you a bit of an insight into what's going on and, and people can just join us as they arrive. Um, before I do go on though, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land in which I'm seated here today. I'm here on the land of the Gubby Gubby and also on the edge of Jinnaburra country as well, up here in the Sunshine Coast hinterland. I live in an eco-village. It's a permaculture eco-village uh, designed in the 1980s based on the principles and ethics of permaculture. It was uh, the first permaculture village um, in the world to use these principles um, explicitly. I mean, I know there's um, traditional villages and Indigenous villages that use these kind of ways of thinking as well, but as a permaculture village, uh, this was the first one and it's been awarded United Nations World Habitat Award for demonstrating low impact and sustainable ways of living. So about a quarter of a century, I decided to move up here as a way to, to, to practice and play and experiment and live into what it means to live a permaculture way of life. And so um, for, my, for my, most of my adult life, I've um, lived here. And before that, I was involved in setting up places like Northy Street City Farm in Brisbane. Um, so really, my, all of my work has been around permaculture, permaculture design, practice, education um, in lots of different realms and, and around the world, working with communities in about 22 different countries with permaculture. So I have, we did a, a presentation earlier today, and there was a nice big black box in the corner, apparently. Um, I don't know if you can see a black box in the corner, but if it's there, just ignore it. I'm not sure what happened with that. Um, so, uh, like I said, this is our open day and really um, please feel free to use the chat um, there to ask some questions. I'm just going to see if I can find a way to actually see you simultaneously. There we go. Now I can see you. That's so much better. Uh, so this... Um, this session is something that happens regularly and feel free to yeah, drop in the chat your questions or seeing we're quite a small group today, um, feel free just to kind of jump on in at any time and, and ask your questions, that's totally fine. So the things that I wanted to just share with you uh, as a beginning point of our conversation today is some of the things, the projects and the programs that we've got going on from our educators program, our teacher certificate, um, the Hive, uh, also a new program called Permaculture Presence and uh, our Permaculture Gardening course, as well as our Perma Youth and Ethos Fellowship programs. Uh, we also have lots of uh, different events and resources that are available um, 
through the Permaculture Education Institute, like monthly masterclasses, monthly film clubs, um, a podcast interviewing uh, leading ecological thinkers and uh, YouTube and blog. Uh, we'll also have a chance like to ask, ask, oops, sorry, I'm using a trackpad um, for the first time. <laughs> Not, not succeeding in it very well. Let me go back. There we go. Um, I must excuse my, I've, I've done myself a bit of an injury by using a mouse too much. Can you believe it? <laughs> and I'm trying to learn how to use a trackpad instead. So apologies for that. Uh, so uh, feel free also to ask any questions of those people who are here who are also part of the program. So the first um, project uh, program that I want to let you know about and give you a bit of an insider's view of is the Permaculture Educators program and this is essentially a, a program which incorporates and weaves together two different certificates the Permaculture Design Certificate which is the standard internationally recognized program that is at the core of this uh, woven around with a whole lot of different materials and context to really dive deeply into permaculture in a way that would develop an excellence in permaculture education. And so we have a permaculture teachers course there and a really an incredible global learning community, which is so supportive and nourishing and, and inspiring to lift up everyone in their work in design and education. And we also include some business modules too, because what my goal is really with this program is that it becomes something that you can create your livelihood with as well as being a way of life. Uh, so we have people on six continents who are doing the courses with us. Um, and so the, the content is global and adaptable. And we also find ways to link in with different local groups too. Uh, I've always um, maintained the program as being super flexible because people have lives. I know, you know, things happen in our lives and we need space to be able to flow in and out without feeling stressed that we're going to fall behind or whatever. So you can start any time, work at your own pace, even take a break and come back to it. Some people have kind of gone through and then started to go through again because it makes sense more the better the second time around. So um, it's got so much flexibility in the way that it's set up. Um, it's also a blended program, meaning that there is the online content, which I'll show you inside in a minute, um, but we also have enormous amount of live sessions that are optional. You, could, you can entirely do the course by yourself in your own place following the content, but, the, but we have a whole lot of enrichment that comes through these live sessions and also tutorials, design tutorials, drop-in spaces where you can come in and get some um, input and feedback, both uh, for the design side and also the teaching side. Lots of possibility for networking and global chat. And also at home, hands-on is entirely encouraged and support. I know that Sheba, who's here today, recently had some members come over to her place. She's starting a verge garden. So where possible, people also interact um, in community too. Uh, so when you enter into the dashboard, you'll see uh, all the different modules. Uh, so there's uh, a series of modules that are, the yellow ones are for the permaculture design certificate, the orange ones are the permaculture teacher certificate, and then there's some grey brown ones, which are for the business modules. And so each week you'll get a new module that's released to you and, it, and you just click on that and you open up and inside you'll see um, there's, there'll be video content and there's um, some uh, text, illustrations, uh, resources and references and lots of different things to guide you and what steps to take next. So really the idea is that by the time you finish this course, you have a really complete and beautiful design that you've created for the project that you're wanting to work on, whether that be at your home or at a community garden or someone else's place, um, and also uh, designed and, and started teaching your own permaculture workshops in whatever that might look like. Uh, throughout the process too, to begin with, we have a series of worksheets and that's really about framing. So what are the ethics and the principles and the needs and the goals in your local area so that you can then start to shape and use that as the foundation for your design work. So really right from the get-go, um, we start to frame up our thinking so that we can start to action um, what we're learning and really ground it in our own context. Um, and so the live sessions that supplement all of this are things like design studios and education labs. So this is where people are sharing their, their finished design projects that they're working on. You get to see, so if you've just started, you get to see where people have been taking it and um, get to ask questions of the process. The, the design studios are also a place where as the presenter, you get to 
consolidate your thinking, articulate your ideas and become a like a presenter of, of that. So if, if that's something that you'd like to do, we encourage people totally to do that. And also as an educator, you get the chance to be looking from the perspective of uh, a permaculture design educator and find out how you can ask really good questions of the people presenting. So wherever you are in the course, there's ways to enter into this and to build and develop your skills and, and capacity. So we do the same with the education lab. We play around with what, uh, what kind of permaculture teaching skills we have. Um, and then I mentioned the tutorials. Um, the pachakachas are, are short, sharp topics that are, uh, people have researched about something fascinating. And so it's not a whole design project. It might just be a bit like how they're working with chickens or what they're doing with herbs. And so it's, a, it's like a micro presentation and short, sharp and interesting. And then we have discussions around that. And um, what's happening tomorrow on Monday is a pollination session. So people from around the world are coming together and just in short conversations, networking and sharing with, it's kind of like a drop-in session of how you can um, find out what people are doing in our global community. And then also the master classes and film clubs, we bring in a, um, a range of different people and um, films and presenters uh, to share with us from the global permaculture community, whether they be filmmakers or designers or writers to come in and speak with us. And it's a really super exciting way to enrich your learning and to ask some amazing experts around the world who may be deeply in permaculture or supportive of permaculture to get that extra information. And then the member seminars are where people who have deep knowledge about a topic that's related to permaculture can give a more expansive presentation. So recently we had one about marine permaculture from Dr. Brian von Herzen, who's the creator of marine permaculture and, you know, movies were made out about his, his work. So um, it's, it's a great opportunity, I think, to really deepen it. And that's really what we're trying to do here at the Institute is to expand the field of what permaculture education is. So within the hive, um, this is a place where all of the live sessions can be found. And um, everyone who signs up to the course gets access to the hive it's run on a platform called mighty networks it's kind of like a non-commercial um, facebook it's something that we just look after it's where all our conversations have happen where we share all our materials where all the events are there so you can see everything that's coming up soon you click on it gives you the details the zoom links you can rsvp and you just get reminders so it just makes um, accessing all of that super easy uh, and then so in the design studios, like I said, people share their design. So everything from what they're doing in their site analysis and they share, some people share what they're doing and how they've used maybe some kind of computer overlays or how they've collected materials. So they'll explain that. And so this is a great way to get, um, it's a tutorial as well. You see how different people are drawing up their designs and integrating the, the different principles and the practices and the strategies. Um, and also, you know, this is uh, someone from Korea who spent a lot of time researching traditional types of food forest systems and then illustrated them and so shared that as part of their design studio. So it's so rich. There is no one particular way that it happens. And what is so beautiful is these opportunities to see that. Um, and it's, it's just a, like I'm always inspired with these sessions. I always find incredible information coming through. I do apologize um, showing this slide because it's all fuzzy, but I did want to show it because in the education labs, what you get a chance to do is to actually see how, um, how people are designing and setting up their education programs. So for example, this is Christine and she shared um, her, her actual flow of how she set up her workshop and gave everyone copies of it. She gave everyone copies of her notes and and showed how she went through the whole feedback process. So you get to kind of cherry pick all these different ideas from all these different people and then shape something that makes sense for you. Um, so all of these sessions, if you miss them, um, you can catch up on them later in the live recordings archive. So you can see here, there's design studio, education lab, masterclass, all the different things are recorded there. When you click on that, say the design studio archive, it'll open up like this window and there's a playlist of all of them there. And if you're living in Melbourne, say for example, you go, oh, okay, Alexandria, I might have a look at hers because she's in the same sort of climate as me. It might give me some good ideas. And so that is all there available to you in the course. And so in terms of actually um, setting up the uh, assessment side of things, we have six. Uh, so the first three are for the permaculture design certificate. Um, 
the first project is to actually do your site assessment. And that's really the reason why I have these assessments is not to try and trick you or test you or um, anything like that. It's, it's to give a framework for designing your project so that you come out with something super substantial and you understand every single part of it so that when you go out to teach it, you've got the process and the practice and the experience to be able to go out and do that well. Uh, so uh, the first part is, is the site assessment. The second part is coming into um, doing a small part of your design. Many people come to this course and have, haven't designed before. Some people come with lots of experience. So we try and just find a, a nice steady ground that fits for everybody. Um, and and it, it adapts for whoever's here. And then the final project of the permaculture design certificate is the um, the whole site permaculture design and the report and bringing everything together. And it's not necessarily a whole extra bit. It's like bringing together all the, the worksheets, like your exploration of how you apply the principles and the, the site analysis and the small scale design and the zones and the mapping and all of that. You just bring it all together in one cohesive thing. And then you get to the end, you go, oh my gosh, look at that. This is, and the presentations are absolutely brilliant. We have some lecturers who come to this session and go, the quality of the work that's coming out of these, um, this student work is, you know, equivalent to third, fourth year master's level landscape architecture. It's extraordinary what people are doing with this. It's so impressive. Um, so then uh, the second part of the course is around designing your education program. So what, who do you want to work with? Um, in what kind of community? At what scale? It might be with children. It might be with adults. It might be with kids with disabilities. It might be with um, it's up to you, really. Who do you want to work with? And in what way do you think permaculture might help them? And then design a program around that. There is no one way to teach permaculture. As many individuals are doing permaculture, there's many different ways that there are of doing it. And we really want to support you to create a program that's actually going to be something you can take out into your community and start to offer. And actually, by the time you finish the course, you've started offering it already because the second one is lead a part of your program and then review it. So my, my goal by setting up the program in this way is by the time you've got all of your certificates at the end of this course, you're a competent designer and, and a confident educator and you feel that you can actually step out and really um, take this forward. I think I might have mentioned it's due date free, which means that um, you can take it at your own pace. And, you know, you don't feel like you're going to fall behind or you've, you know, you're stressed by, oh, I've got to get something in by a certain date. I'm trying to get rid of all of those sorts of school kind of thinking around doing a course. Um, and this is Alison. And Alison, uh, this is one of her projects. Well, she sent in a, a sort of a song to do with um, doing this course. And she talks a little bit about how important it's been for her to have this spaciousness. So um, I hope you enjoy this song, by the way. I think it's just lovely. Hi, I'm Alison and um, I've been a member of this course since 2019. And I, I might just be the world's slowest student, but that's okay. And the benefit of this course is that you can do it at your own pace. Um, it's also been good to take my time with it because uh, I've had to try and work out how to fit permaculture into my life as a classical cellist and work out how to make that all fit together in a way that makes me happy. Um, so this little song is inspired by Morag and the Permaculture Education Institute and I hope you like it. <laughs> It was 2013, I went down to the library, I saw a lovely lady with wild curly hairs. She talked about her life in an eco village near the lining of growing food and earth and people care. Now my backyard's full of cattle and sweet potato and bananas. Signed up to the 
course, learned how to read the landscape, then designed my kitchen garden, got my quails and beans. Share with the hive, make your dreams come alive now. This group of like minds, our community. All my backyards full of cannon, sweet potato and banana. Zones and flow, small and slow, integrate, not segregate. It's hard to be an activist, feels good to be a practice. Connect with the land right here where we stand. One planet living's a really good plan. I just love Alison's songs. It's not the first one that she sent in. She actually sent in her description of what permaculture is um, as a song and her permaculture education project that she's working on is how to design a, a permaculture musical to take around to schools to teach children about permaculture, which I think is absolutely brilliant. So as a professional musician, like if you've ever been to one of the um, plays in Brisbane uh, in the in the concert hall she's in the pit on uh it's one of the the cellists down there so anyway student work is really diverse and it's whatever uh you feel like you're able to contribute sometimes it's music sometimes it's art sometimes it's um and obviously lots of drawing and lots of working drawing so uh one of the groups that's done this course has been a, a group who live at happy farm in um with the Tignat Han farm in France and so they work together to create the ideas together so they mapped out their vision for their community farm they worked out all their base plans together and uh and then worked in that way which is just fantastic some people choose to um, map their ideas more digitally and maybe do a mood board of ideas and collect their elements they want to do um, on things like Pinterest and that's totally fine too uh, but we go right back to the start and really look at what's going on in the land, what needs to happen, um, what's possible to happen, where are the zones and the flows, where is the sun, where are the views, and all of this is like a step-by-step -step process. And then creating base plans and starting to map out what's there so that you can start to see how you can um, add um, layering on the contours, understanding what contours are, how you can use those and then set up how to manage your water system particularly and the flow of nutrients and energy. And then to work towards creating a final design. I have to say from the outset that this is actually a design done by an architect. Um, so please don't feel overwhelmed by this. Um, this architect, Adam, actually came into the course as he wanted to weave permaculture thinking into the way that he was able to offer services to his clients so sometimes people come into the course to go out and become a permaculture designer but if you're already a designer it's a way to layer a new lens onto what you do so that's become part of his practice now which is really brilliant and then because of that he's been invited to the university to teach um, master's students uh, architects to of, of how to do this as well so one thing starts to lead to another uh, so there's lots of different ways. So from the sort of the professional drawings like you've just seen then to just starting to map it out and work it out, work out the flows and where gardens might go and, and um, using photographs. So going from concept through all of the steps to actually getting it happening in your own garden. And so this is a little presentation done by Maud, who's in Western Australia. She has a couple of young kids. And so she said she's been working really slowly too but she wanted to show just a little bit about what's going on in her yard. So there's a few pictures that run through here. And um, so it's called The Nest. And so over a few years time, she's changed it from being just absolutely dead, nothing going on to bringing life. And that's been the first part of her work and starting to try and just add lots of organic matter, add diversity, start to create uh, spaces for fruit trees and life wherever, er, everywhere around the garden and um, really trying to add organic matter into the soil because that's the basis of everything. So she's starting to show how that's um, changing, going from that sort of dead landscape by adding sort of micro animals into a system from guinea pigs and chickens and moving them around the site, putting down lots of organic matter as you saw before, um, adding manures and paper and then covering it up and adding lots of life. 
And so this is the basis of her transforming her place and using the permaculture principles to add that diversity and abundance and attracting pollinators. So she's just in a suburban lot um, in Perth and starting to really learn about lots of different ways that you can eat and play with um, the food and things that you can create there. So um, Maud's also involved in another project, which I'll mention later. So there, as well as doing these project works, there's opportunity to join different communities of practice of something that is really of interest to you if you connect with other people to do it. Um, so this is the group design that the Happy Farm group ended up with doing. So they went from their ideation right through and one of their members was an artist. So she drew up these sort of beautiful plans. And then they went and spoke to the their, their uh, head of their community and they've transformed their whole farm system um, so that all the food that gets grown in, in here now feeds right in back into the community and is transformed into a permaculture garden. Um, this is Joanne's um, plan and what she's done is she put everything, all her final details all into one plan so that she has it there. She can take it out into the garden when she's um, going there and she can just map out what's going on, what needs to happen, where she can add and change things. So, and, you know, plans change too. So this is the thing, like getting to a point of understanding how to keep observing and adapting and playing and filling the gaps and, and um, being in engagement with it. And so part of that is engaging too in garden journals, noticing what's going on, keeping track of that. So you can start to see, oh, what's happening from one year to the next. And, and Joanne, whose plan was before, was absolutely brilliant with this. She's Part of her education has been creating a blog and Instagram where she's sharing the lessons and that itself is an education. And then she's become noticed by doing that. And she now creates, and she's created another program called the Ecology of Changemakers with the Ashoka Foundation, teaching young leaders about um, permaculture. Um, and then again, you know, it could be through song, it could be through art, it could, and it can be through poetry. So one of the questions that we ask right early on is how do you describe permaculture and what it is? And Shannon, who recently started the course, sent this in. And um, so she's just going to read out her poem. I think it's a beautiful poem and I'd love to share it with you. Hi, everyone. My name's Shannon Embry and this is my poem, A Shift in Perspective. Finally, I stop. I slow down. I breathe. I reflect. I take a long, hard look around. There in my being lingers a knowing, a feeling of disconnection, of something lost. The underlying sense that there is a better way. The flawed system, the Aussie culture, global greed, money and power, the need for bigger, better, shinier, faster and cheaper. I ask myself a question, what system of poor health, destruction, discontent, waste, and inequality am I supporting with my time, my energy and my money? I dance in the uncomfortable and then I play with the what ifs. Quite by accident, or perhaps no accident at all, I stumble upon this system of design called permaculture. I dip my toe in the water and it's promising. Before long, I dive in. I absorb it all in like a healing balm on an open wound. Slowly I begin to awaken. The seed in my core starts to grow. It starts with the garden. I hold a mirror up to Mother Nature. I feel the rhythm of her flow. I follow the sun, the moon, the wind's energy and the rain as it falls. I feed the soil and in turn it feeds my family. I close a loop and open a conscious way to live. I step out of the broken system and into abundance and regeneration. I tread lighter. I need less things, but I seek out more connection. I take this knowledge and I myceliate out into my street, into my community, to my country, my world. It's for the earth, for the people, for the harmony and balance of all living things. This is permaculture. It's the future in our hands. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Shannon. Um, so I think this way of finding how to myceliate and how to communicate permaculture is something we really focus a lot here in the course too. It's like, how do you, how do you share the ideas and the concepts in a way that lands in other people? 
because you can go out and you can teach about permaculture and say, you know, this is this system and this is this system. But in, often what needs to happen first is some kind of mind shift and a deeper understanding. And so part of what we talk about is, you know, philosophy and ethics as well as the practical. Uh, and they're all intertwined as well. Um, I mentioned Maud was involved in another project, and this is this is it. It's a, a group of people who are getting together to write books for children uh, that uh, involve teachers and parents. And so this series of books, um, so if, uh, we have one at the moment. Um, the idea is there there will be a series um, that they've got the script, they've written, done the illustrations. Some of the illustrations are actually from Shiva's daughter uh, woven into this, which is beautiful, um, and. And so we're looking at how we can um, get these uh, published in print form at the moment. We definitely almost at the point of being able to publish them digitally. Um, they'll be available uh, for teachers with teacher notes and also activities for children as well. So really excited about that. Um, and oh, that's great for wonderful. And another person involved in this project is Yul. Yul's from Korea, and she was actually the woman who was doing the research on the forest before, and she's uh, written a book as well, uh, which started with her alongside her permaculture journey. So I'll let um, you uh, tell you about her book and how she came to do it. So this is you sitting in her new patch of garden that she's transforming from a degraded rice paddy in uh, South Korea. My name is Yuna. I need to turn your volume up. Korea. And from the beginning of this course, I uh, also was listening to more of some plugged program. And through this program, I got a new vision for my life uh, as a permaculture illustrator. And then uh, during uh, while I'm learning this course, I always keep in mind about this new vision. And then one day, um, I got an opportunity to make a picture book in South Korea. And then I suggest the content with the forest layers and the soil network. And then publish it like this. So uh, this book is published in South Korea three months ago. The title of this book is Dream of Soil. And then I try to convey the uh, knowledge about the permaculture uh, succession and also the conscious life in the nature. And so this is my first work as a permaculture illustrator and I like to continue. So, if you are a beginner of this course, I like to suggest you have a new vision about the life with the permaculture. Then it will boost your passion uh, for learning this course. And with the global community, uh, you can, it can broaden your perspective about the life and the world, and it will help you as well. So, good luck for your learning. Mm, thank you, Yul. So yeah, this idea of having a clear vision and perspective of, of where to go. And it's really impressive, the book that she's written. It's really integrated all the different principles of permaculture in this, in this really accessible form of illustration. And uh, a lot of people have asked if we can get it um, translated into English and, and um, distributed here. So we're exploring how we can make that possible. Um, and when she when she put in her submission for the kitchen garden design, I just went, you that's your second book. Her, her, her drawings for her kitchen garden design were so beautiful and so brilliant that you could just make a book about that, about the progression of her designs and, and the story there. So I certainly hope she does that. And then there's other people who are doing incredible work in various parts of the world too. And uh, this work is uh, led by a man called Bemariki. He's in the purple shirt on the sort of the second line of, of films. Um, Bemariki is, lives in a refugee settlement called Ramwanja Refugee Settlement in Uganda. And he um, was given a, a scholarship to do this course. And right from the very early modules, he thought, right, this is something I need to share with other people. And so he's been, as soon as he gets to a certain point, he 
taught it out to the people and he just kept going and going and so then ran classes with with youth and now um, we were supporting them to help buddy youth around the camps and now there's about a dozen camps that are doing perma youth programs that have been inspired by this and he makes films about all the different aspects of his work some of them are making songs some of them are doing theater um, some of them are sort of reporting in in their own language so that they can share it out and the thing that happened was because he was sharing these films and this is a lesson to everybody because he was sharing his films about what he was doing it created a presence for him to be able to then get work to go and teach in other places so he's become an incredibly sought after teacher through in east africa he was running classes that were suggested by um, the united nations and the office of prime minister for um, orphan carers um, he works with schools and helps to create community food forest projects. Um, and so also part of the project too is working with music and uh, so helping to set up music studios in various parts of the camp. So as well as Alison singing songs, there's also a whole permaculture music movement that's happening in East Africa. And so this community that I mentioned before is such a big part of what this course is in terms and not just the permaculture educators program but all the different programs that we run it's really founded on this thing of, of the live sessions of hive local meetups and communities of practice but like i said before you can go through and do any of the courses independently but i i welcome you so much to really dive into this more deeply so inside of the hive you'll see all different sorts of areas where you can kind of communicate and explore different topics there's uh, all the different courses have their own particular private spot for that group. So it's like having a private Facebook group, I suppose, but it's all in the one spot and you can access different ones depending on where you are. We drop in videos and resources there that you could use and take and integrate into your permaculture teaching and design practice. And then there's also design tutorial questions to keep prompting you in uh, you know, different ways of observing, different ways of, of drawing and different all the different things that go on there. So Hive is a very practical and important part of that. And as well, all these different Zoom conversations that we have live and the connections that get made globally and the friendships that get made globally as well. Um, we do have um, a Facebook archive. Now, up until when we started using Hive, um, we were on Facebook and there's an enormous amount of material there that while we're not adding to it, we're, we're archived and it's accessible. So every single module that you come across, there is a, a separate unit over in Facebook where people for the last few years have been dropping their designs, their pictures, their research. And so that's there accessible too. So it really adds a lot of richness and uh, like a gallery, I suppose, of information. Um, <clears throat> Each month we have a film club and everyone's welcome to come and join this and we invite different people who are either the filmmakers or part of the film team to come and join where possible. Uh, this was one with Helen Norberg Hodge who um, put out a new film recently so where we can it's a new film or sometimes not it's a, a really important permaculture film that can generate conversation uh, globally around a topic. We also partner with different organizations too so that we have um, like in uh, June, we were partnering with uh, the World Localization Day. In July, we're partnering with uh, Plastic Free July. In um, uh, next month, we'll be partnering with uh, the Urban Agriculture Group. And so all the different podcasts and films and masterclasses will have that theme. So again, this idea of expanding the field and connecting um, beyond what you normally see um, in a sort of a permaculture course. And so these masterclasses are available and uh, topics that people um, suggest uh, what we um, put forward. Uh, also what we uh, focus on two questions that people um, put forward. So for example, not the last mass class, but the one before was uh, yarning about permaculture. And the idea came from people saying, well, what do indigenous people think about permaculture? So we invited a number of indigenous people to come and have a yarn about what permaculture means to them. And it's just a great place to explore ideas uh, and also throughout the network too, wherever there's anything that's relevant and interesting to the permaculture education design movement, we will drop that information in there. So you get to find out what's going on in the world, um, whether it be a conference or event or uh, something else that will enrich uh, your work. Um, so some of the other programs, um, starting up this month, we have a brand new course, which is a kind of like a, an express 
uh, permaculture teacher certificate course. So it will be over a period of eight weeks. You can dive in and do it each week. Um, I'll be bringing together some uh, permaculture teacher friends of mine to come and co-teach with me and have tutorials. So if you're interested in that, um, I'm, I'll be sending out information about all the new things at the end of um, in an email later on too. So if you want to follow up on that, you can. So if you've done a PDC and you just want to do the teacher part, um, that is now available. Um, I've also started up a, a brand new program too called Permaculture Presence. And this is really about how to amplify your voice and your impact. How do you create a digital presence or even a, a physical presence so that your work, your teaching work, your design work has a presence that is seen and is visible, which means you get the opportunity to um, become like the local expert in this, the, the go-to person so that it helps to amplify your, your business and your, um, it could be about your business or it could be about a community project. So that's starting up this month as well. So I'll let you know more about that. I also have um, an introduction to permaculture gardening course, which is uh, six modules. These are the modules you can see. It's all about soils and your gardens and making food forests and um, putting in superfoods, uh, medicinal gardens, beauty gardens, tea gardens, and how to use all of that. So it's a very practical course. Uh, and that is the incredible edible garden course. Um, it says here um, for 2022, but actually because I've just got two new brand new programs, this one will be at the start of next year. This is what Yule was talking about. She started with this course. Um, this is about, it's a permaculture design lab, where you, uh, business design lab, where you actually use permaculture principles to think about and design your, your permaculture business idea. And uh, it's done through a, a permaculture mentoring process over a period of, of seven weeks and so um, there is a registration form there to to express your interest in this program uh, and then when the special days like world localization day or permaculture day international permaculture day we host events here at the institute so um, this year we had four a series of four events um, inviting permaculture people from around the world to come and speak. So from Bangladesh to India to England to Africa and across Australia um, uh, with David Holmgren and Rosemary Morrow, some of the elders in the permaculture movement and some of the sort of the TV celebrities like Costa and Hannah and permaculture publishers like Maddie Harlan, who has for 30 years been publishing the permaculture magazine and um, published hundreds of permaculture books. So as huge richness, um, and these are people we can tap on the shoulder at any time and invite to come in and talk with us. And it's such a lovely community um, that I feel in the permaculture community that is just extraordinary. So what we're going to do um, soon is also invite them back for a Permaculture Education Summit. So really exploring the bigger picture around what is permaculture education, where can we take it, and bringing in those multiple voices. <clears throat> and just finally, I wanted to share a little bit about the permaculture education um, charity we run. So the Permaculture Education Institute uh, runs the courses and the events. We have Perma Youth, which is a program uh, that has emerged out of the Permaculture Education Institute. And a lot of this has landed in refugee settlements. So we needed to find a way to support those communities to access free permaculture education and the resources that they needed to make this happen. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the um, Ethos Foundation. And so we work with um, grandmothers groups, with young women, with children, um, and we've been able to support well over um, 1,500 people last year alone in getting their permaculture design certificate course, dozens of demonstration gardens and home gardens and um, all sorts of things that are emerging out of that. Um, this is Jennifer. Jennifer is a seamstress and she was started out making washable sanitary pads and then she'd be going in and um, distributing those to girls in schools and then realizing they had really bad nutrition and understanding about health and she um, then she started teaching permaculture and she runs permaculture school programs so um, Jennifer and I work together in Africa and um, we support her to continue this work uh, so there's uh, dozens of people that we work with every week um, to help them to do their pro, um, to do their work. Um, Roland is one of those. And I just want to share this picture with you. It's an extraordinary picture. This is one of the Perma Youth Kids artwork um, done by a 12-year-old kid. So we have this idea, and I hope some of you can help us. We want to um, 
we want to do something for Christmas for them. Like maybe you can send them a photograph and they can draw a photograph and you can give that as a gift. And that could be something, the money that you give to them to draw the drawing can help them, but you also got a great gift. We'll work out something and we'll let you know how we're going to do that. But they are extraordinary and so excited to be working with the Perma Youth and um, with, with, with us too. And this is Roland who leads so many of the programs for women and children and Perma Youth programs and setting up a children's farm. Um, we're so proud to be able to support her. And this is just a little um, comment from her about what she does. Hi, my name is Roland and I have been a permaculture teacher at the Permaculture Education Institute since uh, January 2021. Um, since I started the course, I've been teaching permaculture in different refugee camps and host communities here in Uganda. I've got an experience from there and I'm really thankful to the Ethos Foundation for having sponsored me into all this. Um, personally, um, this course has been so important to me because I've got the opportunity to learn other different courses that are related to permaculture and to nature care. And I've been able to meet different people and discuss with them and be able to learn from their experiences. Um, to my community, this permaculture course has helped a lot because I've been able to host a training of 30 people, including youth and adults. And it was really successful. And now they are all working and finding ways of transforming the community into a better one. Living in a refugee camp has never been so easy as you can think about it. Yeah, it's hard. And it's even more hard when the refugee camp is in Africa <laughs> and you are receiving $3 for the whole month for food and everything. And we thank the Ethos Foundation for having helped us into so many ways in hosting trainings for adults and even for children. Like now we are having a farm and we are soon starting to um, transform it. And we hope that in the future we are going to be hosting more trainings in it. To the new students who would like to join the Pamakache Education Institute, what I can say is you are going to be surprised. I really welcome you because what I thought I came to learn here is not really what I learned. I learned too much more. I was surprised and surprised from all the learnings that I have gotten here. I thought I came to learn just permaculture, agriculture, and nature care, but what I found was much more than that. And I really hope you also enjoy the course like I did, and you also change your communities. Thank you. Yeah, Roland is just so amazing. Like you said, um, Sheba is a, a pocket rocket. She is extraordinary. And so the thing is, as being part of this course too, you get a chance to meet with Roland and Bemriki and they're members of the program. And it's so extraordinary to actually collaborate on these programs and to be part of that. So we don't have to go to there. You can be part of the educational project and program and thinking design support team um, that enables them to do the incredible work that they're doing there. Uh, so, um, and then they get involved in different sorts of PEMA youth programs, which we get cl global collaboration and communication happening. So we've had a whole series of PEMA youth festivals. There's been permaculture radio shows that have gone national. Um, they've won international awards for their work that they do. And just recently, um, I hosted through the Ethos Foundation, the Youth in Permaculture Prize, which we had um, £10,000 to give away, um, supported through the Permaculture Magazine and the Lush Spring Prize. And, and uh, so I was super excited that Brenda here, who's in the front there, oops, sorry, I did it again, Brenda um, who is also a member of this program. And I have to say, I had nothing to do with judging. I I stepped out of that completely and she won this hands down. Uh, she uh, was unanimously voted to be the main winner of the prize this year. And so she works tirelessly with um, children and youth 
in northern Uganda and is extraordinary in the work that she does. And so if you get a chance to meet with her, make sure you say congratulations. Another winner of this, I have to say, um, and this was only announced yesterday, so I'm super excited. Um, young Lulu, who was one of the co-founders of the Perma Youth Movement as well, who lives in Zanzibar, um, who's working with uh, local kids in uh, schools in Zanzibar, in, in Tanzania, um, also won a prize too. So that was super exciting. Um, Another aspect of the work we do is we run something called the Ethos Youth Fellowship. This is another project of the Institute. Uh, it's a 12 month youth leadership program and uh, the youth get to meet and talk with leading ecological thinkers of our time. So it's a space where they get to specifically do their programs with like, people like Fritjof Capra, Jeremy Lant, Nora Bateson, Helen and Orberg Hodge. And they get to actually be in small group discussions with these extraordinary people. And they're super excited about meeting with them too, because they see the possibilities of passing on, passing the baton to these young active leaders, thinkers, philosophers, practicists, educators. And so you can see Roland there who's in the picture too. So that was one of those extra courses that she mentioned. So we have people from Africa and India and England and New Zealand and Italy and Australia all over coming and joining in these conversations. So it's remarkably rich. So if you know of people who are in that age group, please put them onto me because that is something. And my nine-year-old, by the way, is also asking me whether I can re-establish something that's for the younger kids. So um, watch this space. Um, actually, if there's anyone who's in the room who has younger children who would like to collaborate with me on that, then please let me know because... Um, it's something that we're kind of looking at doing. And, you know, this is how it works here at the Institute. Like someone comes up with an idea and it could be a kid who comes up with the idea and we go, yeah, that sounds like, that sounds like great fun. Uh, so we've, we've got, it keeps happening. It's an emergent process. And so if you come up with a great idea, you know, feel free to put it forward and say, look, I'd really like to find some other people to collaborate with this. This is something that really makes my heart sing. Can you help us? Or can, do you know someone I can work with? It's just about putting the questions out there. So these are some of the, so we put out a weekly podcast, well, mostly, most, most weeks um, with people from around the world, um, just getting different perspectives on permaculture. So we drop these also into the hives and then um, it's a space to have conversations there about those. Um, and then, um, of course, there's the YouTube channel. So there's, you know, well, I don't even know how many there are now, hundreds of videos there that you can drop into resources. Um, to back up things that you're learning and the blog there's hundreds of articles there and recipes and plant information and all that background foundational um, information is there for you to tap into at any time so feel free to go over and subscribe there's a little button at the top of our permaculture life you subscribe over there and can um, well I have been a little bit lax in getting the um, newsletters out just there's so many other things going on but I will start them up very soon um, so if you're interested in joining the Permaculture Educators Program, which is our main program, it's just under $3,000. And that gives you access to all of the stuff that I've been talking about. Um, so um, let me know if you're interested in finding out more about that. If you know of someone who's in the Global South or in a refugee settlement who'd like to join, we offer that free of, of charge and um, they're welcome to join the program. And all they need to do is email us and we send out an application form to them. So anything that you're interested in finding out about and all of our programs on the website, um, most of it should be there. If you can't find it there, feel free just to email me um, at morag at permacultureeducationinstitute.org. And this is the website, Permaculture Education Institute.